Okay, so now we're gonna look at indexing of arrays, and this works um, very similar to uh, you know to other indexing in in Python. Um, so again, it's indexing starts at zero, and the last element is generally not included. Um, yeah. So anyway, let's let's just work through some of these examples. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do here instead of running that is I'm going to dump this down here and we're just going to run these kind of one by one okay so this is an original array I'm just creating um, this well I guess <coughs> pardon me I guess I need to make this one first since it calls it um, so oops Okay, so uh, anyway, so I'm basically creating some values here, uh, 50 evenly spaced values. It's basically one through through 50, or, or should be zero through 49. I'm reshaping it into two by five by five. So five times five is 25, times two is 50, right? So that should work. Um, and then and I'm printing like that. I'm also defining as an int, um, which is a more generic than defining as an int, like an int 8 or an int 16. Um, okay, so anyway, there we go. So this is the, um, this is our array with two dimensions and then five by five. All right, so that's our base array. Now what we're going to do is play around with um, x extracting values from it or subsetting from it using indexes. Real quick before we do that, just uh, um, I'm gonna add another chunk in here. Let's just get the data type for it. Dot 12 dot D type. Okay, so that's int 32. So if you just put int, it defaults to int 32. Um, but since this is zero through 50, we could just do int eight, right? And then if we run this, we should get we'll get back end eight. So, okay, cool. So now let's get rid of this and look play around with some indexes. So I'm just gonna put this in a print, and then our twelve, and then we'll start playing around with it. Okay, so here we're using bracket notation. So here I'm just putting in zero, and let's run that and see what it returns. And we have our regular our, the original array up here, so we can use that as we work through it. Okay, so what we get back in this case is effectively the first part here, right? So we got back all the values that were in the first index of the first dimension, or sorry, the, all the values from the from yeah the 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 first position in the first dimension, right? So um, the zero, zero or first first dimension. So. These are all the values that occur in dimension one, right? The, fir the first, um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I guess I should be using the term index. I think that's better. So these are all of the values from the first index in the first dimension. That's, that's what I meant to say. Now, if I would change this to something, let's just change it to one then we should get back all of these values, right? Because these that would be all the values in the second index um, of the of the first dimension. So you can see we get all those values. Um, if we did two, that should flag an error because there is no um, third index, right, in the first dimension. So here we get back index two is out of bounds for axis zero with size two. So it's in the index zero and index one, there's no index two, All right? So anyway, this for, this just gives you back, um, again, this this, this single, single position here um, is giving us back generally uh, the first index in the first dimension or when I changed it to one, this, the uh, second index in the first dimension. Okay, two. So um, to you to um, extract values from multiple dimensions, then what we need to do is use multiple sets of brackets. So the first bracket is the first dimension. The second bracket is the second dimension. Note here we have three dimensions that we 
to play with because of the shape that we're dealing with. Okay, so if we do 0, 0, that returns 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's see if we can figure out why that is. Okay, so that this returned all the values that are in both the first index in the first dimension, so that would be all of these values, and the first index in the second dimension, which is the rows, right? So anyway, basically was the, f the first row in the first, that's just, again, I'm just kind of calling this like a channel, right? So um, that subset it down even further. Now, if we added another zero to this, now we're specifying a position in the third dimension. And again, it should just be the first one. So what we should end up with is zero, right? So zero is in the fir is in the first index in the first dimension, the first index or in the second dimension, and the first index in the third dimension, which again is it, the first one is index zero. So that returns back zero. If I added on another index, that should flag an error, I think. Yes. Yeah, so invalid index or scalar variable. There's only three indexes, so you can't you don't you can't put in another one, right? There's no fourth um, dimension in this uh, data set. Okay, cool. So that's basically going from like extracting all the values in one. Um, so just again, let's just step through this. So if you have zero, that's going to extract all the values from the f from the first um, index of the first dimension. So just one of these blocks in this case. Um, if we add in another one, now this is the first, all the values in the first index and the first, um, all the values that are both in the first index of the first dimension and the first index of the second dimension. So that's basically the, the, the first, the, the, the first row within this first block of, of values. And then since this is three dimensional, if we have three dimensions, that gets us down to a single value. Okay. All right. So, what if instead of getting back, you know, an entire all the all the all the values in 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 one index of a dimension or or like a single value, you want to pull out a specific range of values? Okay. So, there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. So, let's play around with that. Uh, first off, another way you could write this um, is zero 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 instead of breaking them up into separate brackets. And that's basically the same. It would still return the same position. So this is the type of notation we're going to use for basically the rest of the examples here. So here we're doing 1, 3, 3. That was the example up top. Um, so it's going to be the um, index 1, right? So that means it's going to pull from this block. The row 3, so this block. And then, or sorry, 4, right? 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So from this block and then third. So this should return 43, I believe. Well, let's see if it does. Yep, yeah, right? So, so again, this is the 0, 1, so this second index of the first dimension, the <coughs> um, fourth index, in the second dimension, and then the fourth index in the third dimension. Okay, now that's for a single value. Let's. What if you wanted to get a range of values? We well, can do that with with the with using a, a colon. So, for example, let's say I wanted this entire row. So I could do that with. It would basically just be zero through. Um, and remember that it doesn't include the last one, so um, I guess it would be five in this case. Let me see if that works. Yeah, so there we go. So there's that whole row. So zero th through the fourth, right? One, two, three, four, or zero, one, two, three, four, and then I, ha I go out to five because the last index isn't included. So that get pulled out that entire row, uh, entire row there, and we could do the same. So we could we could do let's do um, uh, let's see how about uh, 
let's just do the uh, same thing here and see what we get. So I'm just going to put in 0 through 5 for, for this dimension. So this should return back this entire second block, right? Because you basically said from the second index, return rows 0 through 5 and columns 0 through 5, and that's the whole array. Right, if we wanted say like this this corner, then it would just be like zero through two, and then zero through two, right? And then we'd get back 25, 26, 30, 31. Okay, and then the last couple examples um, here it are um, where you have a single, uh, where you're leaving some spaces basically. So anytime you have, um, like just an, a, a single colon with no values. So if something like, let's just do colon uh, zero, zero. Okay, so what that means is um, all the values add all the indexes in that dimension, right? So grad both, so basically zero, zero for the second two would be the first row and the first column of each one and then the first dimension is both, right? So we get back 0 and 25, right? Um, so that's what a single uh, quote means. Um, again, you can combine that with like a range. So if we did 0 through zero through 2 and 0 through 2, run that. Again, we would get back so zero, at index 0 and 1 and then um, the first two, right? So, yep. And then, uh, see, I think that's basically it. I guess just a few other examples. If you don't include anything after a colon, that basically means from this position onward. Um, so let's just do that. Now let's do this also. So we'll do all right, let's see if this makes sense. So the first one is index one. So that means the second block here. And then starting at two, so zero, one, two. So starting at 20, uh, starting at this, this. oh, sorry, I start with the columns. So uh, looking at the rows, which is the second dimension, zero, one, two. So starting here and then, and then two over. So basically we got back the last set here, 37 through 39, and then 42 through 44, and 47 through 50. Um, and then if you do it the other way around, so we put colons in front, then it's everything up to 2. And I don't believe it includes 2. Yeah, it does. It. So it's 0, index is 0 and 1, not including 2. Okay, so it's, not, it's pretty simple. It's actually similar to lists. It's just extended to, um, uh, to, to allow for multiple dimensions.